Who dis? Who dis? Okay. Hey guys, what is up? So I am back. I am back. Did y'all miss me? I missed you guys, that is for sure. And holy crap. Let me actually check when was the last time that I posted a video just to be more exact on the dates. So, wow. Okay, so I posted a video one month ago. That was my last video and it was a month ago. So, obviously a lot has changed. And of course, as you guys can read from the title, this is my one month post-op weight loss surgery update for you guys. And I have a lot to update you guys on. So, first off, Oh my god, well... <laughs> so if you guys do not know, I had weight loss surgery. I had the BSG, which is the vertical sleeve gastrectomy, which is the procedure where 70% of your stomach is removed and you're left with a sleeve, hence the name, vertical sleeve gastrectomy. You're left with a sleeve shape. Imagine it as a banana shape. It's usually what they say it looks like. And this reduces the amount of food that you can eat. The purpose of this, of course, is to help you lose weight. Um, this is for patients who are morbidly obese, obese, extremely overweight, etc. If you guys want me to talk about insurance and the insurance that I have, I can do that. Just let me know. A lot of people have messaged me and left a lot of lovely comments which I, of course, appreciate so much. There are so many lovely people here on the internet. They're not all bad guys. So thank you guys. I have read them. I read every comment that I receive and thanks so much. Like I was saying, the purpose of this surgery is to help you lose weight and that is why I got it because I have been suffering from morbid obesity for a very long time and especially starting last year, I hit a point in my life where something just like drastic happen in my family and I hit a very very low point in my life and I you know I gained a, an excessive amount of weight I think I gained I'm gonna use my calculator on my phone well I gained around 40 pounds in one year alone and that is crazy so I have been I've always been old fat okay in this sort of community you can say weight loss community there are terminologies and slang for things. One of them is old fat and new fat. Old fat is people that have always been fat since childhood. And new fat is just like you've been skinny throughout your life and then, I don't know, you're stressed, depressed, something happens and you just gain a lot of weight and you become obese. But I have always been old fat. So I have always usually been overweight. Um, it hasn't been like drastic obesity, but it, I was overweight, which, you know, led to bullying, just a lot of things, but, you know, I, that never really brought me down as a person. I'm really like strong built. The bullying never really hit me, you know, it, I sort of built like this wall around myself where I always told myself, I'm beautiful, I don't need to listen to nobody. If I feel comfortable in my skin and I know that I am healthy, there shouldn't be a reason for me to feel down or hurt by the bullies so I never took it upon myself to lose weight and I was generally healthy and that's contradictory how can you be fat or how can you be obese and you're healthy trust me it could be you know I have family members who are like fucking so fat like they're huge I'm talking about I have an aunt that's like probably like 400 pounds but that woman has no diabetes, no high blood pressure, no cholesterol, and I'm just here like, Bruh. wow, how lucky are you? But apart from that, so like I was saying, I've always been old fat and I have been bullied, you know, there's just a lot of things against fat people, which is understandable. You know, it never really hit me that I had to lose weight to please other people in society. If I was happy and healthy, why should I lose weight, you know? I felt comfortable in my skin, but when I hit that low point in my life and I gained so much weight, that's when I started to become extremely, extremely unhappy in myself and just in the way that I was becoming. Because if I, I knew if I didn't stop, you know, stress eating, because my thing is stress eating. If I am stressed, I go to eat. 
If I'm feeling sad, I go to eat. If I'm feeling any type of way, happy, sad, depressed, whatever emotion I eat. You know, that's not the best thing, especially if you are mildly depressed or if you're going through something that stresses you out heavily. That was me. I was ex I was mildly depressed and I was extremely stressed out with just everything going on in my life last year. Was it last year? It was it was like mid 2015 to mid 2016 so it was that year once I started to gain all that weight just so fast I started to have problems in my health and sadly that's not very you know nice and sadly I'm not very proud to say that because I've always generally been a healthy person where I was taking my life from that point on I knew I was just gonna end up damaging like my system and my body and my soul more than I ever have. Cheers, my mom just brought me water. Okay, that hit the spot. Oh, I drank too fast. <clears throat> That's something that I'm gonna go into in this video. So, what was I saying? So I decided to, when I knew that I had gained so much weight and I was at my highest that I've ever been in my life, I knew I had to make a change. And yeah, I decided to eat healthy, I decided to exercise. Was that doing much for me? No. Honestly, no. I noticed that as you get heavier in your life, it's harder and harder. You have to like do double the work and triple the work to lose that amount of weight that you've gained in such a short amount of time. And honestly, I wasn't really going anywhere with my weight loss process. I was stalling for the longest time, nothing was working out for me, and honestly, you just have to know how to diet prior to even focusing on if you want to, you know, make a healthier lifestyle for yourself. So. Um, I had been, I hit my heaviest since I had my whole life, and I decided to have weight loss surgery. Did I think it was the easy way out? I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. You know, you have the weight loss surgery, you're gonna lose all this weight, and it'll be okay. But no, it's not the easy way out. This is the thing I think that frustrates a lot of us that have weight loss surgery, that people just think it's the easy way out. Like, it's something that you do to your body, and it's fine because, you know, you're, you're gonna be, you're gonna go from being fat to being skinny, so it's fine, you know. You're gonna have the easy way out of life. Don't work out, don't do anything, just have the surgery and you'll be skinny. Yeah. And I think that frustrates a lot, a lot of us because it's honestly not like that. And people have such the wrong idea of what weight loss surgery is, and it's, it's so mind-boggling because Oh my god, it's frustrating. I'm pretty sure you guys, if you guys have had weight loss surgery, you know exactly what I'm talking about. In the meantime, I prepared... You can't see it because of the glare. But, it's just a notebook that I prepared and I wrote everything down. And it literally looks like a white sheet of paper, but I promise you, please, focus at least on one word. It's not doing anything for me. Well, let me see if I write it in a black pen. Let's see, because I wrote it in this blue pen. Let me see if I write it in black. I'm just gonna go over what I already wrote. Wow, okay, literally nothing. Thanks, lighting. And I also brought out my binder. This is my weight loss surgery binder. If you guys um, have OCD like me, then I recommend you guys do this. Um, I literally jotted down every packet that they gave me. I have every receipt where I spent my own money on products that I needed to buy from my surgeon, which is another video if you guys would like that. The same with um, if you guys want to know how I paid for my surgery, I can do a video on that or if you just want to comment that down. I might or might not talk about it. 
Depends if a lot of people want to know. And, um, yeah, I just, you know, the OCD in me. So, I'm going to talk about, um, stats now. So, I had my surgery on December 27th, 2016. So, I had to deprive myself of family gatherings and family traditions like food, delicious food. But I rather have had my surgery prior to anything. So I'm glad that I had surgery prior to, I don't know, starting school. I really wanted, because you know, when you have your two weeks off school before going back, I really wanted to have my surgery during that time lapse, and I did, thank the Lord. So my starting weight, which was my highest weight ever recorded, um, was 270 pounds. I might have gone up a little bit more than that, but I don't know because I, di I, I didn't even dare step on the scale. So my highest was 270 pounds. Whoa. So pre-op, meaning that the day of surgery, like that same day when they weighed me, I weighed 249 pounds, which means that I lost um, roughly around, is it 19 pounds? Actually, it's 21 pounds, okay. So, I lost 21 pounds prior to having weight loss surgery on my two week um, liquid diet, is that what it's called? Yeah, it's the two week liquid diet prior to having surgery that your surgeon um, puts you on. If you weigh higher than that, I've even seen you know people that go on it three weeks prior to having surgery or even four weeks, which is a month. Um, before having their surgery. For me, I had to do it two weeks. And I didn't do, my surgeon was different. Your surgeon will be different, you know. Um, my surgeon, he had this liquid diet of his own, so I didn't have to rely on chicken broth or sugar-free popsicles, you know, stuff like that, the usuals. He actually sold his own, like, shakes that were, um, like food replacements so I had to drink five of them every three hours that's all I had for two weeks prior to having my surgery it's called the OptiFast I think 200 they're pretty darn pricey they come in strawberry chocolate and vanilla definitely my favorites were um, the strawberry one that one they're all good luckily they all good and they don't taste like protein shakes some protein shakes they taste like whey protein which is oh I don't like whey protein um, but yeah luckily they didn't taste bad and I really liked drinking them <laughs> so I had no trouble doing that diet and I lost 21 pounds to that but I worked out every day I would walk one to two miles every day and yeah so I lost 21 pounds I actually didn't weigh myself today but I did go to my surgeon's office Yesterday, Wednesday, today, no, I'm lying. Today's Friday. I went Wednesday to the consultation and I weighed in at 227 pounds, which I don't remember me being ever 227 pounds. Actually, I lied. In high school, well, in high school, I used to roughly weigh 230 pounds. So, being 227, I don't ever remember me personally ever weighing that. So, remember, starting weight 270, I currently weigh 227, and that means that I have lost, in a month, um, 43 pounds in total. In total. From, you know, since I started my liquid diet to now, it has been a total weight loss of 43 pounds. Okay, so now I'm going to be talking about, um, like, detailing, like, you know, how do I say this? So, of course, um, day one to day three, you're on the clear liquid phase. Um, there's a whole bunch of things that you can research online about that. I'm just going to be talking about what I specifically had during those, you know, during those phases. Um, for my clear liquid phase, it's supposed to clear liquid, so you can't see anything through them, and they're not supposed to have anything inside. Um, I tried the Isopure protein drink. 
that tasted so bad. I bought three of them. I bought, I think, the kiwi one and I bought two coconut ones. My favorite drink, well, that I used to drink before is coconut water. I used to love coconut water. And I thought it was gonna taste like that. Oh boy, was I wrong? Mm -mm. Isopyr tastes like pee. Um, so I had chicken broth. I tried beef broth, but it wasn't really my thing. I didn't like the color of it, and I'm a very visual person. And I didn't like the color of it, so I didn't drink it. I just stick to chicken broth, which surprisingly I didn't get tired of. And then of course, um, religiously, every day, and for the rest of my life, I have to drink at least one protein shake. And the one that I liked the most was the Premier Protein that has like at least 30 grams of protein. And it's so good. I like the chocolate one. I have yet to try the vanilla, but I think the chocolate one is the one for me. So then we're moving on to day four and seven. So we're hitting that one week mark after surgery. And this is the full liquid phase. So I had no sugar pudding and jello. They were my best friends. And I tried yogurt. I think I, yeah. I tried the, um, of course, yogurt, only light or no sugar added. I tried the Publix Light, didn't like it. I tried the Yoplait Whips, didn't like the consistency. And I tried uh, Yoplait, like the regular one without any sugar. I like that one, I like the peach one. And I had that and baby food. Baby food. Oh my god. So baby food was my best friend. My favorite flavors are banana, Hawaiian delight. I didn't like mango anymore. I used to like the mango one, but I, I didn't like it anymore when I tasted it. And another one, but I, I don't remember. It's something else. It's something else like I think it's banana with strawberries. Something like that. Baby food was my best friend. It was my best friend. So in this phase, I started to um, drink soups like a little bit thicker, but they had to be really well blended out so they couldn't have any chunks. Okay, so we are moving on to days eight through 13. Um, we're almost at the two week mark off, but not yet. And this one is the puree phase. Um, not a fan, but I could start a lot of good things here. Um, for example, I started on low-fat uh, cottage cheese, and I could start with fruit. So I did a little. I did like two ounces of my low-fat cottage cheese, which I didn't know. But those things have a lot of protein. That's like, it, I'm pretty, and it's four ounces, or is it five? I don't know. But no, it's four ounces. Yeah, and it has 10 grams of protein. It has a lot of protein. And um, for fruit, I love peach. And I did it with the syrup, of course, it's sugar free, but I bought the canned one, the, the canned one that's sugar free. And I used to do two ounces and two ounces of fruit and cottage cheese. And that was my favorite snack by far. Um, in this phase, I could start eating, um, you know, broccoli, which I had a lot of, of carrots, I had a lot of sweet potato and um, mashed potatoes I started here as well um, I also started to eat a lot of beans but they had to be pureed which I didn't like the consistency but you know beans have a lot of fiber and protein so I had to eat it <laughs> the last phase is at least for me was um, days 14 to 28 or for me, in my case, I had to do it up to day 30, which is exactly the one mark off after having the surgery, which is the soft phase. Um, here, I could start eating a lot of different things. Um, I ate a lot. I continued, you know, I can, okay. I could eat a lot of these new things, like um, here it says, Fruits, like there's a whole variety of fruits, a lot of vegetables. I could start on my deli meats like ham, cheese, turkey, roast beef, stuff like that. I can start on ground meat and you know, so on and so forth. So I can start having a lot of these foods, but I would mainly just go to my baby food because it was a thing that would sit 
the most comfortably in my stomach because for example I think I started on the soft phase a little bit I started on the dot but I was really craving I love soup I love soup so I was really craving Chinese soup like the special soup which has everything it has chicken um, it has I think ham it has Chinese beans mushroom potato like it has a lot of things that I could eat but even though they were things that I could eat they were just you know a lot of heavy things still and I this is the day that I remember where after I ate that after I ate the soup mind you I only had four ounces I served myself four ounces of the soup and I only I think managed to drink um, maybe two at most and I just started to feel so bad I literally felt like the food was here like if I had eaten a horse I felt like the food was here and I just felt like a knot in my stomach and I was like having a hard time breathing I was like what have I done to myself I'm gonna die I'm literally gonna collapse on the floor I laid back for like a minute I was like let me just like stretch out you know my chest area and so I go to lie down and at that moment at that moment that I go to put my head on the pillow literally <laughs> I felt so well like after I puked because obviously you know like that sound was supposed to be like the food coming up and out so I did puke I puked everything that I ate all the soup all the you know all the meats and stuff I puked it out but at the moment it was like incredible it was like magic at the moment when I finished puking I felt so much better I felt so much better um, to this day I've, I haven't had that soup I'm a little bit traumatized that wasn't the first time that I puked something I remember you know it's hard guys it's hard this surgery you have to adapt to a new lifestyle completely and I'm gonna go a little bit into that further on into this video but one of the things that you have to really accommodate yourself to and really like focus on is chewing. Um, it might be like such a little thing to like normal people and like how I used to be before like I would never think of chewing. Like I would just naturally just chew and swallow. Bruh. So chewing. Um, I was recommended to chew the size of your pinky nail. We all have different pinky nails because we all have different nail sizes. And, but you know just a small amount and I can only chew that one time disintegrate it completely before I swallow this is all a mental process that you have to do and to this day I still don't chew correctly and I chew too fast and it doesn't sit well it does not sit well in the beginning it really did not sit well and I puked a lot of times so yeah a lot of foods just didn't sit well to this day I have to really focus mentally like chew 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 swallow chew 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 swallow and if I don't I have consequences yeah so let's get to the fun part this surgery is a lifestyle change literally you will never be the same again because you will have to adapt to your new lifestyle and it's a big one okay for example eating like I just mentioned you have to really chew and then swallow your food which is something that not a lot of people you know think of doing but it's a, it's such a small thing prior to surgery and then when you have the surgery it's it's literally like your main focus because if you don't focus on your chewing and your bite sizes you get you know you're feeling nauseous and that leads to vomiting you want to avoid vomiting because that's, that's just going to agitate your stomach you know and having a new stomach having a new pouch that's been tampered with you don't want to agitate it it's not gonna make it very happy it's not gonna make you very happy drinking oh my god so fun fact I can never drink you know I can never drink and eat at the same time ever again which is you know it was a really big deal to me beforehand I never used to drink sodas or 
like I would drink them occasionally but I wasn't like that person like had to have a soda in my fridge like when I used to go out to a restaurant I occasionally used to drink a Sprite here and there but I wasn't a big you know fan of carbonated drinks um, juices aren't really my thing you know crystallite I tried it not a fan so things like that and I miss so much being able to just chug water I have to drink water so slowly now fun fact I can only drink water that's cold like it has to be in ice and it has to be in a glass container for me to drink water how crazy is that how is it possible that I cannot drink lukewarm water or room temperature water out of a water bottle unless I force myself to so drinking is a big factor as well. You cannot drink 30 minutes prior to eating. You cannot drink 30 minutes after eating due to the fact that water can fill you up very quickly. At least for me, it fills me up like this. If you eat, I've done this, I've done this. If you eat and you don't wait for at least 30 minutes and you decide that you're dying of thirst and you need water and you take at least one gulp or one sip it doesn't even have to be a gulp it has like a sip of water like a, let's say 10 minutes after eating oh my god you feel you feel so bad after <sighs> these are all these are all things that you know it's a live and learn it's a live and learn lifestyle especially in the beginning it's the roughest the roughest part is in the beginning the first month after your first month when you pass that first month oh you're free to go you know you're free to fly okay so I think from this point on I pretty much just talked about pretty much everything I think now I'm just going to be talking a little bit more about um, I don't know like physical changes so physical changes have I noticed any physical changes um, yes ma'am I have I have noticed uh, my face face is definitely smaller and it's elongated I definitely have noticed that my waist has gotten smaller I haven't officially began to work out and I blame school for that because school this year is hectic mm -mm. but I literally have to get back on to working out because you know they have told me if you lose a lot of weight very fast and you don't work out and make it into muscle your skin is gonna hang a lot you know and loose skin loose skin is a natural thing of like when you lose weight I don't know what I was talking about like someone called me on the phone but I'm just gonna show you um, my whole stomach situation this is what I look like with a shirt you can still notice some back fat I've never been a fan of my back fat um, my skin on my arms is hanging a lot unfortunately that's where I used to have a lot a lot of um, just fat accumulated so I need to start doing some heavy weight lifting my nutritionist told me and my sutures um, so I just love I feel so secure when I wear these um, yoga pants from Victoria's Secret I just feel like there's a lot of like it just keeps it secure you know so when I put this down this is what it looks like I still have a little tummy tummy, which is fine because it's going away slowly but surely. And these are, these are my sutures right now. Can you see? These are my sutures. I, I have one like right here. I have one, two, three, four. So guys, I don't think I have anything else to say. I think this is going to be a very long video. So I think that's all that needs to be said for my one month post up surgery. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I am going to be adding some before and after shots because I love those. That's like my favorite thing to watch when I'm watching weight loss videos. And there will be a lot of those coming up. But other than that, you guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. And I will catch you in my next one. Bye, guys. I just took a Percocet, so that really relieved my pain. I took a little quick little nap, and I just ate my lunch, which was chicken broth.